Hello there, Luca. Hi, Henry. How are you? Just before I leave you the floor, a couple of questions. I know uh, one that's been in the news uh, this week everywhere is that uh, French President Macron visited mm. the, the Renault site in Douai in northern France yeah. uh, on Monday. How, how did that go? That was a great event. I think that uh, everybody and the president especially was impressed by you know, the level of competence, uh, experience, and also the level of technology that uh, Renault has when it comes to electric vehicles. And it was the first visit uh, of a French president on the site since 40 years. So it was a big event uh, for everybody. And uh, yeah, this project gives a lot of hope to, to the people, to the region, to the country. So it was good to see. Historic moment. One other thing, very cool set here. Yeah. Um, what's the thinking behind that? Yeah, we're going to talk about electric cars. We're going to talk about how to make electric cars popular. So electric, popular, electropop. And you see the inspiration from some of the music shows we used to look at, watch at in, on t in TV, you know, when we were kids. So that's the inspiration, and uh, you know, I think it's very cool. Electropop, I like it. Luca, uh, over to you. Thank you. So today uh, sets an important milestone for us uh, at Renault, and uh, I would say also for the Made in Europe. And beyond the symbol, it is, uh, I think, a strategic choice with a taste for challenge. We're creating a compact, efficient, high-tech ecosystem. It begins with uh, the story of uh, electricity. We are talking about three plants in the north of France, which we will bring together to become one of the biggest and most competitive electric manufacturing facilities in Europe. We'll add to that a battery factory with a capacity of up to 24 gigas. By the end of 2024, this industrial ecosystem will create 700 additional permanent jobs, employ a total of more than 5,000 people, and produce more than 400,000 electric vehicles. We will connect the electricity to our mega factory in Cleon, potentially delivering 1 million e-tech engines for hybrid and pure electric vehicle early. Our Cleon plant will uh, be the symbol, I think, of a successful transition from the era of combustion engines to the electric modules. It will require the upskilling and reskilling of more than 1,300 people. And to complete the loop, batteries will then be repurposed and recycled in the refactory in Flan. With our partners, uh, Veolia and Solvay, up to 80% of the strategic minerals recycled from our end-of-life batteries will be reused in new ones. So this resource-conscious short-loop system contributes to sheltering us from the unreliability of the global supply chain. So all in all, we aim at achieving the greenest mix in Europe for the Renault brand. We are preparing to reach up to 90% pure electric vehicle sales in 2030. Group-wide, by 2030 again, we're very confident we'll be way above the CAFE regulation, including under stricter limits than the current ones. We have worked a lot in the past year. We have created the conditions for our competitiveness in Europe, including in France. So how did we pull it off? First, we've been doing it for a decade now. Electrification at Renault is a continuum, is not a complete uh, shift. Since 2009, we have invested over 5 billion euros in electrification and plan to invest 10 billion euros more in the next five years without counting our alliance partners. We have, of course, gone through the negative profit years, but we have the technology, including the components, the platforms, the experience, and the savoir-faire. When classic powertrains are becoming less and less competitive due to stricter regulations, we have divided the cost of batteries by two in the past 10 years, and we'll divide it by two again in the next decade. On top of return on investment, 10 years of experience also means lessons learned, that data collected 
and of course uh, performance improved. We have just crossed the threshold of 10 billion kilometers traveled by 400,000 Renault EVs. Our six electric vehicles were built on seven generation of platforms, multi-energy and EV native, and you'll see two of them today. Three generation of batteries have been powering our EVs since the beginning. All of them safe with in-house Renault innovation guaranteeing no leaking. We monitor over 320,000 electric vehicles in real time and collected over 300 terabytes of data just in the past 12 months. That's the largest battery data set available to any OEM in Europe today. Our experience also means smart allocation of resources. We know what we are doing. When it came to selecting our battery chemistry or choose whether our platform would be multi-energy or native, we had no doubt. We went for pure EV native. We know it's more efficient and the best choice to deliver on our customer expectations. Take, for example, our e-power e trains. We are the first OEM to have developed its own e-motor. No magnet, no rare earth, based on electrically excited synchronous motor technology. It combines power and sustainability. Beyond Zoe, we'll keep improving our efficiency thanks to smart, innovative technology such as axial flux. We're quite proud to be the first OEM to announce the introduction of this technology right after Ferrari with its SF90 Stradale. And same goes for the platforms. By 2025, we'll produce over a million electric vehicles every year within the Alliance on just two of them. One is entirely dedicated to our higher hand and sporty EV vehicles, and one is made for our affordable compact vehicles with a super cost competitive battery and a high level of carryover from other models. And we'll extend our value chain control by introducing our own power electronics, partnering with leading edge European expert, ST Micro Electronics. Leveraging their know-how in semiconductors and power electronic systems, we'll work together to integrate their products and packaging solutions in our battery-operated and hybrid vehicles. This technology means lower battery cost, more kilometers per charge, shorter charging times, and reduced user cost. Concretely, they will contribute to reduce waste of energy by 45% and cost by 30% at e-powertrain level. Our battery strategy showcases this combination of experience, control of the value chain, and smart allocation of resources. First is about experience. Through time, we have developed in-house battery expertise from cell to pack. We have our own cell validation plan, develop our own battery management system and connection box. We are among the very, very few volume OEMs to do so. It allows us to get the very best out of our batteries and to prepare for the next step, the highly cost-efficient wireless battery management system. We master the entire value chain, including the battery life cycle. We are one leap ahead when it comes to recycling and creating short loops from battery minerals to copper from our e-power trains. We have a structure dedicated to our recycling activities called Renault Environnement. We have an industrial site dedicated to scale it up. We call it the refactory in Flan. Our business unit, Mobilize, will leverage it all and generate revenues around energy services. Our only missing part was, so far, cell chemistry. And we'll show you today we have a plan to get there. We've also made bold standardization choices within the Alliance to unleash competitiveness, just by relying on the nickel, manganese, and cobalt chemistry, 
and one unique cell footprint will cover 100% of our launches across all segments for Renault Group on a yearly basis. At cell level, we offer two thicknesses. That way, our batteries will be either affordable for human and compact vehicles or highly performant for our higher end or sporty models. By 2030, we'll drive our cost down by 60% at pack level. We'll reach below $100 the kilowatt hour in 2025, and we plan to be below the $80 per kilowatt hour while preparing the arrival of uh, all solid state battery technology by 2030. For our customer, this uh, chemistry choice delivers a very competitive ratio of cost per kilometer with up to 20% more autonomy compared to LFP solutions and a much better recycling performance. When we do not go in-house, we partner up to secure both capacity and value generation. We are securing the production of one million electric vehicles by 2030 made in Europe from battery sourcing to vehicle assembly. Our historical and strategic partnership with LG Chemical goes on and will provide the battery for our upcoming Megane. Two partners will be joining to ramp up our production. Envision AESC will provide us with an efficient, affordable solution for our CMFB EV vehicles, starting with the Renault 5. This battery will be assembled in France with a carbon footprint reduction of up to 35% compared to the current ones uh, which are equipping the Zoe. As for our high performance batteries, we are investing with a partner, Vercor, specialized in low carbon battery cell production. We'll jointly develop and produce battery cells and module prototypes in an innovation center which we'll be building in France uh, next year. By 2026, we aim at manufacturing high-performance batteries in a best-in-class gigafactory targeting 10 gigawatts for Renault Group. So, optimal decisions for product design, efficient production, setup and uh, EV lifecycle management, smart partnerships will lead the energy transition and make electric cars very, very popular. That's why we named the whole event Electropop. In the 90s, electro music emerged on the global scene, and French iconic bands gave the French touch to the scene. Democratization is the Renault touch to electrification. We bet on iconic design and aim at the top of the charts. Zoe, R5, and more models to come are designed to hit the core of the market. That's where they can make, we believe, a true difference and have a positive impact. And we make them in electricity, at the heart of Europe, true to our roots, creating value for us and our stakeholders. That's the way our music goes. So stay tuned. I will we'll now pass on to our top people our top experts, they will go deep into what we intend to do, how far we'll go uh, on the value chain. And now I will hand it over to my friend, Harry. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Luca, for this overview.